Hi, this is Tamara from MoogliBlog.com, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make the Bright Chevron dishcloth. You'll find the free complete pattern for this on MoogliBlog.com. Now today I will be using Lion Brand Yarns Kitchen Cotton and a Furl's Wooden Eye Hook. That's a 5.5 millimeter. Let me move that out of the way a little bit here. Now here you see the finished dishcloth. Um, it could be used as a dishcloth, a washcloth, you could even use it as a square and a blanket if you like. Uh, the finished project is about 9 inches by 9 inches. This is what it looks like from the front, and this is what it looks like from the back, just to give you some ideas. Now, let's begin. Okay, so here I have the first two rows of the washcloth or dishcloth done. For row one, you chain 32, skip the chain closest to the hook, and single crochet in three chains, Let's see here. Take a closer look at row one. You single crochet in three chains, chain one, skip a chain. You can see right there's a skipped chain. And then you single crochet in the next three, chain one, skip a chain. And you continue that all the way across until finally you work three single crochets in the last three chains. Then you turn and begin row two. You start with a chainless starting double crochet. Uh, that is linked in the pattern, and I will link it in the tutorial post on the blog. If you don't know how to do that, if you don't like that stitch, you can substitute with a chain three that counts as your first double crochet. Then you double crochet in each chain, excuse me, let me try that again. You double crochet in each stitch and each chain space across. So just in the chain space, you want to leave that chain you skipped in the foundation there unworked into. Now you'll notice that I worked into the back hump of the chain, leaving just one loop free to work into later. I find this to be a lot easier to work into later. Uh, your mileage may vary. You do whichever you prefer, just as long as you've got some sort of chain there to work into that you've skipped over. So basically it's a row of double crochet across, and we come to the end of row two. At the end of row two, you take the hook out of that active loop and put a stitch marker in it. This will prevent it from coming undone while you're working the next row. So that's just kind of a safety maneuver there. So if you don't have a stitch marker, you could use a piece of scrap yarn tied in a bow around it or tie it in a bow, whatever works for you. So then it's time to begin row three. We're still gonna go ahead and turn and work back the other direction for row three. But at this point, we're going to bring in our second color. Now in the original pattern, they were all sort of a color plus a white, which in the Lion Brain Kitchen Cotton is called vanilla, love that. But uh, I'm out of white, so we're going to use two different colors here. And of course you can use whichever colors you like, whichever are your favorites, whichever work with your kitchen. So to begin with color B, which in this case is blue, very handy, we're going to join with a single crochet to the first stitch. Now to do that, and I have standing stitch tutorials available as well, linked in the pattern. So we start with a slip knot right on the hook. Then we're going to go right into that first stitch, like so, pull up a loop, and make a single crochet. That's how you join with a single crochet. Then from there, and I'm going to hold on to this a little bit with my fingers just to hold it a little extra tight so it doesn't want to move around on me, I'm going to work a treble stitch in the first skipped chain of row one. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find that first skipped chain. Remember we've got three single crochets followed by a skipped chain. That's where we're going to work into. Now working into skipped chains can be very difficult. They can get quite tight, especially after you've worked into the chains on either side. So if you run into this trouble, which I often do, what I will do is I will take your standard yarn needle, tapestry needle here, go under the loop that I want to work into, and use that to just pull it up. Go ahead and pull it right up away from the other stitches, way bigger than you'd really want it to stay, like so, because that will all work out again, especially when you work the edging. That big loop will disappear. So that's sort of my little tip for that. So holding it gently so we don't accidentally undo what we just did, I'm going to make my treble. I'm going to yarn over twice, find that loop we just pulled up there in the foundation chain, insert my hook, and finish a treble crochet just like so. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip the next stitch of color A here, so this one right here because we've got this stitch kind of worked in that space. 
Then I'm going to single crochet in the next stitch, like so. Then I will chain one, skip the next stitch, work another single crochet. And then this is the part that really probably confuses people. We're going to work a treble two together in two different places. So for the first one, I'm going to yarn over two and I'm going to go right back to that same skipped chain, the one we worked into before. So that chain will have two stitches worked into it. So I'm going to insert my hook there, yarn over, pull up my loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I'm going to stop with two loops left on the hook because remember this is a two together. So that means I'm going to start my second leg, if you will, of the treble. And for that, I'm going to be going into the next skipped stitch. So if you lose your place, you can always look. We've got that one worked there. So we've got three more single crochets. One, two, three. And there's our next skipped stitch. If this one doesn't want to be worked into, I can do the same thing. Use my tapestry needle and pull up that loop. Now the nice thing about this is you only need to do this for this very, for row three when you're working into the foundation chain. After that, working into the skipped stitches is much easier. So it's kind of a pain right now, but it will get easier. So we yarn over two, find that loop I just pulled up, insert the hook in there, and from there I'm gonna go ahead and finish the stitch. Pull through two, pull through two, and then finally pull through all three. And there we have our treble two together. So I'm going to skip the stitch behind that, because remember we've got a stitch here that counts for that, Work into the next stitch with a single crochet, like so. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the stitch after that, like so. And then it's time to do another treble two together. So what I'll do, I'll do this one more time on camera. Yarn over two, go back into that same skipped chain from before, no longer so skipped. There we go, pull through two, pull through two, two loops still on the hook. I'll use my needle to pull up the next loop here, pull it up nice and high, yarn over two, and go into that one to finish my treble two together. Some people call them treble, some people call them triple. Same thing, the abbreviation's TR, at least in American terms. There we are. And then from there again, we skip that stitch and back, single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, and then it's time for another treble two together. And you can see that's beginning our chevron pattern already. We'll continue that on down to the end of the row until we get to where there are just two stitches left. We'll do a treble back into the last skipped one, but that's not a two together, that's just a treble there to sort of finish the triangle there, the point, and then finish with a single crochet in the last stitch. Now from, let me get there, you go ahead and catch up, rewatch those treble two togethers if you need to, and I'll see you at the end of this row. Okay, so here I am finishing up that last treble all by itself, like so, and then I will single crochet right in that very last stitch. And there we have row three. You can see we were, we've begun our lovely chevron pattern. So now it's time for row four. Now to begin row four, you can start with either the chain three to count as a double crochet. I prefer the chainless starting double crochet, but either will work. I'm going to yarn over, go into that first stitch. And essentially this just counts as a regular standard double crochet. So whichever method you prefer for starting a row of double crochets, that's what you do here. Okay, so I've got my chainless starting double crochet. Okay, so I'm just going to double crochet in each stitch across. Now remember, you've got that chain one, skip one in between the single crochets that are in between the trebles there. So you just wanna work into that chain one space. Make sure you leave the stitch underneath there free because here's a spoiler alert, that's where we're going to be working into when we do our next trebles. So, but it's still a solid band of double crochets, a lot like what we did in row two. 
You just want to make sure that you work into the blue each time and not into the red. Or I should say into color B, not into color A. And that you go into the chain one space, leaving that stitch underneath free. So I'll see you at the end of row four. Okay, so here I am making the last stitch of row four. Now, just like all the other rows, there should be 31 stitches. These even numbered rows are a great place to check and make sure, check your work and make sure you have 31 stitches across because it's a lot easier to count those double crochets than it is to count the trebles and the skips and all that. So we've got our 31 stitches. So at this point, I'm done with color B for now. But we're again going to remove our hook from that loop. And this time I'm gonna steal the stitch marker. You can have two, work back and forth if you want. Use the same one to secure that loop, which means color A here is now all on its lonesome. So I'm gonna pull those forward out of the way, the color B loops and edges and ends and all that fun stuff. Get my hook back in color A here. And then I am going to prepare to make row five. So from here, I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Now this is not counted as a stitch. This is just to get us up to the height ready to work into this row. So I don't do a chainless starting double crochet or anything fancy here, just a simple chain three. And this will get, um, this is where we'll work into when we work our edging too, so that will kind of disappear a little bit. So I'm gonna turn, now holding color B out of the way here with my hand a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and work a single crochet right in that first stitch. Okay, and that's actually our first stitch of the row, if you're counting right there, that single crochet. Then I am going to work right in front of the previous two rows here. So I'm going to yarn over twice and work my first treble in the skipped stitch there, right in between those single crochets. So for the trebles, I'm going to work right back into the same color. So that's a good hint for you to make sure you're working in the right place. So I'm gonna go right in there. And because this is our first one, just like our last one, it's not a decrease, it's not a two together. Just a simple treble crochet, like so. And then it's just as before. I skip the next stitch there in that row, go to the next stitch, work a single crochet, and get a little bit more yarn. That's the one downside to working with two active yarns at the same time. Sometimes they can get a little twisted. So it just, it really behooves you to take a moment after each color and switch them out so they don't get tangled. So now I've got some yarn pulled up, I can continue. Let's chain one, like so. Skip one, single crochet in the next one. And now we begin our treble two togethers. It's not easy to say, is it? We're gonna yarn over twice. We're gonna go right back to that same stitch. Notice this is a lot easier than working into the foundation chain. No need to use a needle. And also notice that I'm not enclosing any of the blue, I'm working right in front of it. So I just pull that whole thing up in front. So I work until I have two loops left on the hook, yarn over twice again, find the next unworked stitch there from row two. Oops, no biggie, yarn over again, Go back and then finish off my decrease. Pull through two, pull through two, then pull through three to finish it off. Like so. You can see we're starting to get that cool look already. Let's do one more. I'm gonna single crochet in the next stitch. Remember, skip the one in back there, right behind our treble crochet two together. So we single crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. And then another treble crochet, two together. Yarn over twice, go into that last one, the same one that the second leg of the previous treble was worked into. Then we move to the next one for the second half here. Where'd it go? There it is. And you can see once you get the hang of this stitch pattern, it really is easy to just kind of keep going and make it a you know, a Netflix pattern, a TV watching pattern, um, take it on the go. Kind of hard to write down the instructions, but you can see it's not too hard really to do. Just work right in front there. Stop with two loops on the hook. 
yarn over twice, find the next one, go in there. And finish our treble. And I think I'll stop this one right there. I think you've got the idea. After here, I would just keep repeating. Basically, it's those two rows. We do one of these rows, and then we do the row of double crochet back across in the same color. And you can see we've got those stitches that the next row of blue chevrons will be worked into. If I pull back up the original here, you can see right where we're at. There's the bottom edge. We've got the bottom one, and we're making the exact same pattern. Now, when you make the final few rows of the pattern. What you want to do is you want to make a color B row. In that case, that would be our blue. So you want to go ahead and finish a double crochet row of those. And then like this here would be our last row at the very top. You want to finish with a treble row, one of the odd numbered rows. Then you can continue with that color, in this case the color, the A, the color A, the red, same here to work a single crochet evenly around. When you work the single crochet, especially when you come back along the foundation chain, you can work one right into the other side of those chains and that includes where you worked these and that you can see, even though I pulled those loops up with the needle, that it really closed those up nicely. When I work a single crochet edging like this, I like to put a little chain one in the corners to kind of help me get around the corner nicely. And then working into the edges, I just sort of evenly spaced it. Um, on the one side without the chain threes, I would work one at the top and one at the bottom, a single crochet of each color. That's just what worked out best for me, but with edgings, you should absolutely depend on your own gauge and your own style and what you like. On the other side, I worked one at the base and one around each of those chain threes. So you can see it really does blend in pretty darn well. But again, with edgings, that's something you can have some fun with. Add a fun edging, add your own details, whatever you like. But that is the basics of how to make the Bright Chevron Dish Cloth. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give us a like. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. <music>